Welcome to the Brass Hand Woodwind Shop. This is the third video in the series on restoring French horn valves. This is a very old French horn and it does not play well because the valves are so loose. This is a good instrument, but it is extremely expensive to refit the valves. So I took on the challenge of inexpensively tightening the valves so that they work well and they do not leak. I have never done anything like this before, so I will be experimenting with one of my own horns before I start to work on this one. I have received a lot of very good comments and suggestions from the viewers. One of them that I discussed last week was putting a thin layer of solder on the valves and then turning it down and plating it and then fitting it into the casing. I am planning on experimenting with that. In the last video, one of my viewers left a comment and told me about a website that I'd never heard of before. It's called Rob Stewart Brass Instruments. Now I'll leave the link to that in the description below. But he talked about re-sleeving valves. Basically what you would do is turn down the face of the valve a little bit, take a brass tube and put it over the valve, and then cut the holes for the ports, and then you fit it into the instrument. I had never heard of this before, but I think that sounds like a very good idea also, so I'm going to experiment with that also. Because of this project, I have been thinking about valves a lot lately. I have been thinking about the best way to do this project. The thing that makes it hard for rotor valves is that there are so many tapers. Both of the spindles are tapered, and also the valve itself is tapered. So you cannot really get a good hold on it with a lathe, because when it's tapered, then the valve will tend to move around a bit, and you cannot cut the face of a valve when the valve is wobbling around. And also you need a lathe with a very tight tailstock and a tight carriage so that the things don't move around when you are working on the instrument. I do have a lathe, and I showed it to you in the last video, but the problem with my lathe is that it is not tight. So if I were to chuck a valve into the lathe, and then I were to take it out and put it back in and chuck it in again, it would, it would line up differently the next time. So then when I, if I were to go to cut it, it would cut off differently than it did the first time. And also for rotors, the two spindles need to be exactly on center with the face of the valve. Because if they're not on center and the valve rotates and it's lopsided, it's going to go back and forth inside of the casing. And then one side of the valve will be loose and then the other side of the valve will hit the inside of the casing and it will make the rotor not work well. So the two spindles and the face of the rotor need to be exact. And I need a lathe that I can trust enough to make sure that they are exact. So what I did is I went out and I bought this tool. This is a dial indicator and it measures in thousandths of an inch. So what you would do is hook this up to the lathe or you would hook it up to the piece of work that you're working on in the lathe and then you would turn the lathe around and then if this dial goes back and forth as you are turning it you know that it is off center but if it stays the same then you know that it is on center. So what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to tighten up my lathe. I do have a little bit of experience on a lathe, but I am not an expert at it. So I'm going to do as good as I can. And so I'm going to use some reasoning to try to figure out the best way to get it to work for what I need to do with it. I bought this lathe about 20 years ago from a music store in Youngstown, Ohio. They're closing down their repair department and I bought all of the stuff that they had and this came with it. I have used it a little bit over the years, but not nearly as much as I should have. I'm a little embarrassed to say this. I've never tightened it up. I've just used it the way it was and I've made it work. But if you do valve work on a lathe, you really need to get it tight. So I'm going to do that now. I do know a little bit about lathes, but if anyone is a machinist out there, they will probably be screaming at their computer screen. This part is called the headstock, and this is the chuck, and you want that to be very tight. So I'm moving that. It's not moving around forward or backward or to the side. So that's good. So this part is good. This part is called the tail stock and that is very loose. I can tighten it up to some extent but it's still loose. I'm going to turn this out a little bit. This part should be tight too and that is a little bit loose. And this whole thing moves around and that's going to add together to make a lot of problems when I try to work on valves. So I'm going to have to tighten that. And then this is called the carriage and there are three different things that move on the carriage. It can go this way like that or it can go back and forth this way. And if you want to cut at an angle, you can do it this way and you can change the angle on it. And that goes back and forth with this knob right here. All three of these things need to be tight for the carriage to work well. So a little loose this way, 
Um, yeah, there are some adjustment screws on the bottom. I'm going to have to adjust that. And then this is very loose right here. Uh, I'm going to have to take that apart and see what to do with that. The other one is very loose too. So I'm going to have to do something about those things. I'm going to start by removing the tail stock. You can see how it moves back and forth. And that's these two screws right here. I need to adjust those. And there are two witness marks to line those up. So I'm going to line up those two marks right there and then tighten these screws into place. And another reason why it's loose is because of this. The adjustment screws there are made so that it can fit snugly between these rails. So that, let's see, that screw is about where it's supposed to be. Now I'm going to tighten up the other screw. Okay, that's pretty close, but I can fine tune it later if I need to, if I need to change it around a little bit. Now I'm going to tighten up these two screws. I need to put it on there first. Now that I changed that, it seems fairly tight. Uh, probably in the back, I can tighten that up just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that is tight now. Okay, I need to make sure that it does move back and forth though. Okay, it does move back and forth. It's very tight, so that's good. So that will work. Now there's one more thing to tighten up, and that's this piece right here. You can hear that that's loose in there. I'm not sure what that part is called. But, uh, and I'm not even sure how to tighten it up. I'm guessing it has something to do with what's back here. I'm not sure exactly how this is supposed to work, but I'm going to take this off and see what's under there. And then we'll go from there. Oh, okay. There's a key right there to hold on this. I think all I need to do is screw this in farther and then tighten up that. So I'm going to put this back in there and then tighten up this screw. Then I'll loosen it a little. That's like what you do on woodwind instruments. You tighten the screw so that the key is tight and then you turn it back just a tiny little bit. So I'll do that. Okay, that seems to be tighter. Now, to keep it tight the other direction, I think I just need to tighten this up a little more. So I'm going to put this back on and then tighten this bolt up a little bit more than I did last time. I finished the tailstock and that's nice and tight. The only thing I don't have is the locking mechanism, but I think I can probably get by without that. If I do need it, I can make it, but I'm not going to do that right now. Now I'm going to do the carriage. I'm going to start with the main body of the carriage, and that's the up and down motion. And there are some screws back here that look like they might tighten that up. Okay, then I took off three screws that were on there, and this piece came off. There are two shims on, oh no, three shims on there. Okay, I'm going to take off the thinnest shim, which looks like it would be that one, and put it back together and see if that tightens it up. That is very tight now, so that is good. Now I have this one that is not tight. Let's see here, how do I do that? I'm going to turn this so it's out of the way. There's a screw here. I'm not sure what that is for exactly, but I'm going to take it out and find out. Okay. I turned this all the way out. I'm going to pull this out. I think what I found is this piece right here this, that goes on the screw, that seems to be very loose. Yeah, this piece is very loose. I think I'm going to have to do something about that. Uh, I may need to go to the hardware store and get some bolts to fit that tomorrow when they're open. It's late right now and they're closed. Okay, so, so I have that. And now I have this part which is loose. I'm going to take that to my bench and work on that. I need to pull out this key. 
like that. So this looks like a smaller version of the other one that I worked on. So it's probably going to be done just about the same way. This has turned out not to be quite as hard as I thought it was going to be. I should have done this years ago. I took some more of the parts off and I found that this piece was loose and it's going back and forth. And this is the piece that holds everything together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a new hole in this piece right there. And then I'm going to tap it out with, I believe it's this tap. Yeah, that looks about right. I'm going to tap it out and then hopefully it will be a little tighter. I drilled the hole for this and then I tapped it with the appropriate tap. So that is done. I'm putting this back together. Okay, then this, this goes over here like that. And then I'm going to put the screws back in and that should be good. This is very tight now. It's not moving in any direction. So this is done. So there's just one thing left to do and I'm not going to do that tonight. I took off the part that I'm going to need to fix and you can see how loose that is. And another problem too is I found out it's reverse threaded. So I'm not sure how hard it's going to be to fix that or find a tap that is reverse threaded that will fit this. So I'm not sure how hard it's going to be, but I guess I will figure out something. At first it went faster than I thought it was going to, but then I ran into those problems and it slowed me down. So I did not get as much done as I was hoping to tonight. And I also did not get to use my little tool, but I will get this fixed by next Friday. In the next video, I'm going to have a lathe that's working like it should, and I'm going to start cutting some metal. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.